Hi, everyone. Welcome to Ask the Plan Man. Everything you want to know about insurance, finance, and more, but we're afraid to ask. I'm your host, Bruce Weinstein. I have a belief that everyone out there deserves and needs some form of a financial plan. Planning makes up all walks of our life, and we're here to allow you to self-educate as we break down various topics of insurance, finance, and more. Today, I want to talk to you about one of the most asked questions of me in my 35, almost 36-year career, and that's about Social Security. When should they take it? Should they defer? Should they take it early? How do I apply? So I want to break down with you some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to Social Security and help you understand better what benefits are going to be available to you as you approach ages 62 and beyond. So let's start out first and foremost that every three years, you should be going to ssa.gov. We're going to put that in the show notes. SSA, Social Security Administration, .gov and make sure that they have properly registered your earnings for those past three years. Any mistakes that you find beyond three years can no longer be fixed. So it's your responsibility to make sure the data is accurate. There's an annual threshold every year, depending on how much income you make, and then you cap out. You want to make sure that you have your 40 quarters, that's 10 years of work history, as accurate as possible as you're getting closer and closer to age 62 and beyond. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the decision-making that we've helped clients with over the years of whether to take Social Security at 62, which is the earliest you're eligible for, deferring it to 65. And now for a lot of people, age 67 is the new level to receive your benefit, your baseline benefit. And then, of course, the question people ask is, well, if I defer it longer and wait till I'm 70 or beyond, is it worth doing that and collecting a higher amount? So let's break down some of that for you and help you understand. First and foremost, I'll use myself as an example. I'm born in 1963, and my normal retirement age now for Social Security is age 67. It's no longer 65 for people born in my year. I can still take it at 65. I can still take it at 62. However, you need to understand that a person that goes from age 67, taking Social Security at age 62 is going to lose 30% of that benefit. It's 6% a year penalty. That's 1.5% per quarter. Let's go back and do the math. If I'm eligible for a $2,000 a month benefit at age 67, but I want to take it at age 62. I'm going to lose 30%. That's $600 of the 2000. My lifetime benefit is now only going to be $1,400. Does that make sense for everybody? So you need to understand that. Second, just because you take Social Security at 62 doesn't mean you're going to get Medicare, which is the health insurance side of that. That is still age 65. Check out our other episodes on Medicare. I'm not going to get into that deeper today, but just understand age 65 is for Medicare. You don't want to do it at 62. You're not going to be eligible to get in, and you certainly could be penalized if you wait beyond age 65. Again, that depends if you're still working or not. Go check out our other episode. Now, if you're taking it at 67, you're going to get your full benefit. Another question people ask me is, well, can I still work and collect Social Security? And so let's have you understand how that applies as well. If my normal retirement age is 67 and I collect Social Security any time before that, from age 62 to age 66 and 11 and a half months, I'm only allowed to earn, this is 2022 data, $19,560. Anything I make above that, Social Security now starts to take back $1 for every $2 I earn above that $19,560. So if you're still working full time, still making a, a fair amount of income, then again, taking Social Security before your normal retirement age is going to cost you some of those benefits. So it behooves you to understand and know exactly what you're going to do and why and whether or not you want to forego some of these benefits. Most people shouldn't. They, If they're going to work, just keep working and let your benefit accrue and, and maximize. Next, 
Big question. Clients have enough assets. They have enough resources. They want to retire before the age of 62 or in my case, 67. And the question is, should I defer my social security until later ages and get a higher benefit? And so my response to you here is, depending on how you're generating your retirement income is how you want to evaluate what to do with social security. So what do I mean by that? Well, there's some simple math and some simple calculations that if I wait till age 70, my break even is this uh, for giving up, you know, the three years from 67 to 70, and then uh, I'll get a higher benefit later and I have to live beyond a certain age. And, you know, there's all this stuff. So first and foremost, I got a problem with that because nothing is guaranteed. And so you're, you're banking, you're giving up money now to potentially bank money later that as I've always said, if, if you've ever heard me talking about the perfect financial plan, you tell me when you're going to die and I'll tell you what the perfect financial plan is. So you, you always have to have contingencies and what, uh, what ifs in there, which is why insurance is so important to people is to take care of those contingencies. The problem this is, is I don't know if you're going to live to be 72 or if you can live to be 102. And so how you evaluate this is going to be predicated to your affordability, right? Now, if you're retiring early, and you do not want to use social security and you want to let it grow, meaning you're not taking it at 62. Let's say you're, let me go back. Let's say you're retiring at 60. You've done well for yourself and you're able to afford, you've done a financial plan and you're able to afford retiring at age 60. Well, you're not even eligible for social security yet, right? You have two more years. So you're going to need to use your own assets and resources to generate the cash flow to meet your retirement needs. Now at age 62, all of a sudden you have this new pocket of money being available to you called social security, 20 grand, 30 grand, 40 grand, whatever it might be. Okay. Now your question is, do I take that now or do I let it go till 66, 67, 70 or whatever? My question to you is this, if you're using your own money instead of the social security money, then my opinion is Absolutely not. Why would you spend your own money in lieu of the money that you're guaranteed to be getting from Social Security Administration? Let that sink in. I have a family. I have a spouse. I want my kids, my grandkids someday to potentially get my assets. Why would I spend my own assets in lieu of getting income the government is owed to me I earned it. I put it away for them, right? They took my FICA out all those years. I'm eligible for that money. So it's my opinion professionally that I've given clients over the years is you take Social Security as early as possible and not use your own assets. If there's plenty of assets available, then you take the income. You got to evaluate your situation and assess what's best for you and whether or not to take it early, defer it, take it later. There's other issues around Social Security to get into. Come speak to us, speak to your advisors, educate yourselves, and please be forewarned. This happened to my stepmother. She's called the Social Security Administration when she was getting ready to retire a few years back. She spoke to three different people. She got three different answers and eventually made a decision based upon what she thought to be the best answer from the people at Social Security guess what? It was still wrong. And she was now stuck because of the decision she made on that bad advice. So trust me when I tell you this, even the people at Social Security Administration don't know what the heck's going on over there. So be forewarned, make sure you do your homework and talk to an expert out there. Please like and share our episode, Ask the Plan Man. Join us again each week. You can reach me at bruce at asktheplanman.com. You can call us at 844-PLANMAN. That's our 800 number. Like, share, subscribe. We got a YouTube channel. We're at your favorite podcast station. Again, my name is Bruce Weinson. I hope you enjoyed today's Medicare session. If you need some advice, always get it right. Come ask the plan, man. We look forward to seeing you again. Check out our other episodes and keep sending us your questions. Thank you.